after she called Dennis. It's not for men who want to drive women crazy, but it does encourage a feeling of freshness. If you've been looking for an aftershave as cool as the clothes you wear, get into new denim. The aftershave for men. You don't have to try too hard. To the driver of EOT 378K, this is the police. You are totally surrounded to turn off your engine and step out of the vehicle. You're wanted in connection with driving EOT illegally on the road. So stop right there, freeze, and stand still, laddie. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do it, mate. Get me out. Get me out. Come on, get me. Please, help. Please. What have you got? Arrested me. The police got me, Pete. Help. There's a cut. The cops after you. No, no, I didn't mean to do it. It was Bramble's fault. Bramble told me. Bramble told me to come and speak. Get him out. 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 Get <laughs> You're breaking, Gary. Get out of there! It's gonna blow. Get out! Get out! Okay, I'm gonna have on the way. Hey, Gary, get out of there! Get Ladies and gentlemen, we are jacked, stacked, and ready to go. That chassis leg's been repaired. I can't actually quite remember. For you, it's only seconds ago. For me, it's a whole weekend because we've been winning trophies down in a couple of car shows. Ruby's been hoovering up. And I left. Painting that, that's what I remember us doing. Yeah, we got some paint on it. Well, what we've done, we've just fixed the, the nose end section of it, just added a little bit of angle to that nose, just so it gives a better finish when it lands in the end of that chassis leg here, look, just so you get the proper factory finish. It just needed the little edge strips putting on the end of the chassis leg. And then now a little bit of weld through primer, and we're getting ready to put the chassis leg actually in position and we're going to jack it into position we're going to check the measurements and then we're going to get it plug welded on once we get it plug welded on we'll clamp it and do all the the uh, c-clamps on it and get it plug welded and once it's nice and tight and welded because we're all ready with the weld through we can then put the wheel tub on the good thing about putting the wheel tub on is we instantly get the strength back where we needed it and, and there's no, nothing to stop us uh, putting the wheel tub on, it just wants a little bit of paint and the usual preparation with a weld through primer. But it is actually shot blasted back and treated and ready to go. So we've got ourselves a bit of fast action now. All the preparation stuff is done and the, the bulk of the time, the last few, in the last hour at least of the video, I think you're in part 23 now. And in that part, I don't think you've hit 24. No, you, you're in 23, so it's very hard for me to keep track. But, yeah, bulk of that work was getting that ready. And now it's time to actually install it into the vehicle and get ourselves this rear end back in, in shape, OK? So we're going to start by first just applying some weld through down into the end of that chassis leg because it's going to be receiving some welds later on once we insert the chassis leg. We wouldn't be able to actually get 
the weld through primer in there so it's best to do it now and again the end of the um, chassis leg there so we'll do that then I'll insert the chassis leg we'll put you on the tripod so we can see it going into position nicely then we jack it in we jack the groove and get that right tight up um, we may be using a combination of tech screws and C clamps I'll just see with the C clamps how it goes all right but exciting times in this episode as we see some some good metal progress being made leave me now to just get things set up I'll bang you on the tripod and let's get some work done let's go to work okay cracking underside live shot for you you'll see me unfortunately burst into view view for you as I come along I'll keep the commentary going straddle this bad boy apart now you're going to see us just slotted in the dolly jig is lowered down the car's jacked up on a big piece of 6x4x4 be, be four. I slot in and oh yeah oh in you go wow oh yeah now that sound was not unfamiliar to me because I've slotted it in and out quite a few times but uh, it's always nice putting it in right there we go arms back okay we've talked about alignments on this so so now come on around this side I'm always thinking of if you lot in YouTube land so I'm trying to get you some half decent composed shots so you can see what's going on well I've drilled through these and I had a great comment who, who is it commenting CS63 I can't remember I'm sorry I forgot um, oh someone commented just centre punch the when you spot well drilling yeah you can can do that that's good nothing against it it's a good move I'm going to actually get myself a good strong centre punch but for these ones I drilled through anyway and I can handily use the, the holes to look through and make sure I'm lined up with my spot welds. Just gives me a little bit more confidence that I'm in the right zone. Okay, so it's critical now to get this left and right position just right. We want to make sure we land right, but it does it does like to just guide itself this. But I can see the spot welds come into view and come into line all of a sudden. So that's what we're doing up here. Just finalising ourselves, then we take the measurement across in at 89. I think we're just going to refer to the manual. I mean, I know it's roughly right because the this is set for a Cortina chassis and it lands right in the middle of the fork. Although, I think when I built this, some cars are a little bit over that way. Ruby's shell was virtually in the middle. Actually, I'm trying to think what it Oh, no, it was on this car where it wasn't, and that was because there, there was nothing left of the chassis. Right? But yeah, it bangs in the middle of Ruby and Swampy, goes in, in the middle of that. This one, when it came off, was, was pushing against this side, but the whole floor had gone, so that was why I knew there was something. Right, anyway, enough of that. Clamp, tech screw if we've got to, but let's get this locked up into place and let's get some quick welds on there now just to hold it in, in position. And then we're starting to get moving. Okay, great stuff to get this on, everybody. Right, now we don't need, now that the car, the car was raised so I could get the chassis leg on, just to dodge it over the, but what I want to do, it was just to dodge it over the, the dolly, what I want to do is put it back on the, the block and the axle stands, you can see it dropping onto the axle stands now, remove jack, so that's going to come right in front of your screens, and then we're going to place the jack under the dolly jig, cross member bar which I just about fit before it hits the, the plywood sheet that your camera's on, I like your camera to shake, shook, 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 shake and look at this we've got this bolt which fits through and now rotate you, I'll keep you running, I'll slowly rotate you across to this area, see my hand in frame just up the top, light on it for you, there we're aiming for that now, we're aiming for this bolt to lock through. 
To do that, I now jack up the dolly. And if we've done our homework, the bolt goes straight for maybe a little one, two, and for my shoes to do it. Take much, it won't take much at all to so just tap this bolt straight through now. Oh yeah! And we go. What do you know? And now, what I do to get a nice bit of tension on it and to assist it with the car, we put the other bolt on the other uh, leg so that the, the dolly jig pushes the car equally. Now, the other chassis leg's a bit knackered, so it's probably gonna cr collapse a little bit on it, but I wanted to like jack the car parallel. In other words, both chassis legs jacking up at the same time. It's just a little bit better that way. So I've got to lean across, get the bolt in this side, do it now. It's, it's starting to line up. You won't see this, it's just slightly off screen. I'm going to obscure your view. Oh! Whoa! Straight through. Alright, so it just shows that the dolly jig does its job. Now both bolts are in. If we continue our lift, that puts the car tensioned on the legs both sides. Now it's time for me to just bash a little bit. Right, I'm going to tilt you up. Stay with us, we're tilting you backwards on the tripod. I'm trying to do it slow so you don't get annoyed at home on your big screens. Tablet users and uh, mobile phone users don't mind. Okay. So we're just going to jig around this a little, little bit. There's a little bit of room. Watch how I can knock it with my hand. There we go. Watch this. Bump. And bump. We can go where we want. We're looking for a general lineup of this, okay? That's what we're looking for. So we'll keep our, our eyes out for it. So lead me to just get this exactly in the right place and then we'll, we'll start getting our first tax on, everybody. Chassis leg going on then, episode 23. Okay, okay, we're under the chassis and we're looking at now getting the exact spot weld position holes drilled. Sorry, plug weld position holes drilled because this is a new floor. It hasn't got any holes for us to get to, the, to connect to the chassis leg. So this is where the great idea of drilling straight through when we did the spot weld removal comes into play because you now take advantage of that fact that this has got holes in it and you can drill straight Okay, I'm touching the edge of the chassis with a chuck of the drill, but don't worry, it'll still go through. Like that. We do them all the way along, and that'll give us holes inside the floor pan, which is where we then can put either tech screws, or we use a spot weld drill bit cutter to then make the full hole for the uh, the plug weld to go in so that they're, they're just very handy to do it so um, I do that both sides and it just means you're not guessing and then because it's the same hole then you're gonna at the same time you fill it with a welder when you do the, the spot weld and uh, they're in exactly the same spacing the same amount not that I'd really worry about exactly the same amount of spot welds going back on it's nice if you can do it to do it but I wouldn't lose sleep over that one um, some absolute concourse people maybe not on Cortina's would spot weld count and I totally appreciate that so it's great it's uh, not an avenue I'll be exploring particularly or actively exploring shall we say so we can go and get another one here The reason that takes longer than normal is that I'm not able to put full, uh, I'm not able to put full force on the actual drill because I'm holding the camera in my right hand. Hey, right. So you'll see a tech screw come through there now because I'm going to put you on the uh, the floor. 
and then tech screw from the top and you should see the floor pan close up okay let's have a look right so I'm I'm right overhead you should see a tech screw come through the floor there I'm just loading up with the tech screw chuck perfect tech screw holder grab yourself a techy screw then look to see where that hole came through I can see it overhead you're underneath I'm overhead Now, did that pull the floor in? Yes, it did. And that's what I'm telling you about. That's what we need. So look at that. You saw it before I did. Look how that's come. Now it's really brought that right against the floor pan. So we're almost following the exact profile now because the floor pan was never really a perfect uh, fit. The copy pan. So you just have to do a little bit of, um, you know, bash it, bashing and bending. But they're, they're almost there, you know, they're in the right ballpark, which is great. So I'm pleased about that, the fact that that's gone and drawn it in nicely. So we do two more equal ones on the other side, then the rest of the holes, they can be drilled into the floor pan inside the car using the spot weld drill bit. And then we just weld straight to that. So that's it, that's good. Okay, I'll take you off. out the floor now. And a view down this side to see um the way that they come through in fact you probably would have got a better shot there never mind i'll do you uh, i'll let you see it close it up it's already closed it up whoa so in one little just a little gap up there you see where the gaps are that's where i'll put the closest hole that's already drilled that's where i'll send it through the floor okay One more to go, just up here. Woo! Hear that snap into place? Nice. It's really, really drawn it in. Hear the tension go up instantly, it starts to come into play as it I mean, just retensions itself and the car starts to get its strength. Great stuff. Quite a good angle for you as well there. Let's go and have a look underneath. Okay, that's all the tech screws in, and now what we need to do, I've drilled through all the remaining holes that are already in the chassis, like so they come exactly into the floor pan where you want. So what we do now, we just put the spot weld drill bit in these. We don't want to use a normal drill bit because that will damage the uh, chassis leg, so we just treat it as a spot weld removal, but it's actually the reverse. So that's how that system works when you haven't got your, your plug weld holes already in, like up here where we've took it out. They're already all in position, but the new floor pan, we need to know exactly where it went, and that chassis leg marks the spot for us. So it's now time to get the spot well drill bit, drill bit, and lock in load and get them out. Okay, you can see the holes that drill straight through and come into the cabin, giving me the index now. I'm using the flat spot well drill bit, but we're going to go in and take it out. Okay, and now you see all the way, and now we're ready for plug welds because we've got enough where we can take the tech screws out later on, and that gives us the chassis leg welded to the floor. We can go all the way up wherever we want now with the welder. We're starting to get the strength back. Um, no, no reason why I can't get the welder now, just get some tacks in, start getting some strength into this. Let's see how the welder takes, should be okay. 
looking good for chassis leg reinstall really happy the way this is going at the moment ladies and gentlemen can't wait to and get that wheel tub on as well here we go nice very nice against there feel a little bit of tension as it's going into the gaps between the sill is it a snug fit one two buckle my shoe oh that's how you do it Okay, so let's have a little closer look and I'll, I'll show you how we know we've got it right. Look at the original line on the back of this panel. You see that where the old tub used to be? And you find that it's landing on that line, showing us we're good to go. And then down here we find that we'll soon be able to pull this in just down there where it meets looking snug down there following up here that little bendy tag there is coming in nicely up the top we're nicely there clamped in at the side and really you're ready to go so the fit is good and we really are oh, it's even find its way on its own into there now those spot welds are slightly over drilled you see those holes there it is, this is exactly where it landed, so we'll have to just fill those up. They've got in the way. That's not a problem though, jobby grabbing again. Here, and then onto there nicely. All in all, a very good, a very good job. Almost level with the edge of there, that'll pull in all right. See there? So we're looking good there. I think we're, I think we're going to go with that. And I start getting some spot welds in it. I know you like the spot welder, many requests coming in from YouTubers, more spot welding, more welding please. While we're on the subject of welding, we do need to be extra vigilant with our masks. I've started wearing a mask in all, all applications, including grinding. Um, just, 
I mean, I've had a mask on most of the times, but I have done some jobs and I've just been lazy and not been putting the mask on. Recent reports about carcinogens and stuff, I'm going to make sure I'm always covered. We do have those roller shutters open if I notice that the fumes are building up. Now, because we're a dipped shell, there's, there's been hardly any burn back of paint. That's the advantage that I was telling you about. In the past, I've seen it where you're welding and all sorts of paint starts to burn away and your, your garage is covered in these awful fumes. That's not what we've got here. We've been all right. Quite clean metal and pretty much along the, the, the uh, journey of this car has been clean. But there has been times when I've been sanding paint covered panels back and there's dust. I'm going to be extra vigilant with the mask. I've classed myself as occasional welder so I'm hopefully these cancer scares are going to be low risk but um, there's no point uh, anymore taking any shortcuts so it's mask on I'll show you the mask that we're going to be using in a minute I'll just go out and get it oh in fact it's already here but I've just bought a new version of it looking around can I see it yes there it is I've been using this 3M one little cartridge at the side which you can replace they call it a fly mask, you can see why. They're quite good, but you don't have to go that far. You can get a paper mask. And um, there's these ones which I use for, for body filling and for iron filings when we're doing the croc sander. But I've just got a newer version, another uh, one which the welding stores supplied. I mean, we can wear that under the welding mask as well. So a mask under a mask, okay. Don't really need it for spot welding, although you do get some fumes come back off the spot well they're just when it's burning the metal but it's nothing like as bad as when you're migging i think to be any big danger um, you'd have to be welding non-stop uh, day in day out and most people that do do that already know about wearing protection so just some little thought there for anyone at home doing the welding get yourself a mask it's better okay I'm going to get some spot welds on this wheel tub because I'm really happy with the position of it. So that's going to get some even more strength back in the car. Some much needed missing strength now coming back into Project Bramble. I thought I'd better show you the alignment technique because you, someone might be doing this with a Mark III who might need this help. Okay, so a block of wood going and jamming, jamming up a bit unorthodox. It'd be better with some specialist tools. This works though. Those blocks of wood pushed down on this corner of the floor. <coughs> Excuse me, because the corner of the floor is probably warped a little bit. You've had that much going on, that much welding, that much twisting and bending. But you've just got to bring it back into, into line. So <coughs> this side's not changed. That's the good thing about not taking this side out. Measuring from there up to the parcel shelf, you're able to come down on your lip which is resting on the original chassis leg, so all them relative distances are the same. So we measure from the parcel shelf down, giving us 44.7 on both sides. So it's totally parallel. So the edge of this now is parallel with the run of the parcel shelf, which means that everything else is straight because the parcel shelf's never moved. And then our distance from the end of that bracket there, measured off this, imprint is the same both sides at 2.4 or 20.4 so that means the wheel tubs rotated correctly because you can you can get the wheel tub to a degree you can do that with it just a little bit and because I've used a new old stock tub it hasn't got the original spot weld drill marks on it so that makes it a little bit risky so we have to just make sure we copy off these and you can see this circle here just is on the very edge of the circle and on this side the very edge of the circle so we are there and correct in position it's now time to put some spot welds in so that was important so because that's pushing down on that we want to get that braced and fixed in first which means we're going down this run with the spot welder here we go let's do it
water flowing underground. And you may say to yourself, am I right or am I wrong? And you may say to yourself, my God, what have I done? Water flowing underground. After the money's gone, once in a lifetime. Here we go! <laughs> a nice new morning has started. Last night, the spray gun went straight over the tub because I want the tub to look good. It's nice and solid with the spot welds. It's nice and finished with Ford Primer Brown. Why not? So look how we get the strength back, ladies and gentlemen, out there in Patreon and YouTube land. Thanks for the continued support. Bit of support there. Bit of support there. And a bit of support out there. Thank you. Okay, what do we do next? Well, we need to, our special protector there, we need to, we need to, we need to carry on cleaning the welds up around this area. See, so we can fold this bracket back. At the moment, if I fold the bracket back and reinstall the seat spar, we end up blocking access for grindings on these welds. So we want to clean this area up now. Then we're going to put the seam sealer in. Then we're going to clean up the rest of the floor welds. Uh, there's a little patch, there's a little uh, break in the weld there. We need to repair that. And then we can um, pop some paint on because before we put the cross member back, I want that all under there painted and ready. And seam sealer on before the cross member goes back on because I won't be able to get to it otherwise. So this morning's jobs is clean up work and a bit of prep work few more welds to put in the top there you can see they need to do and we should get them in really now and then they're out of the way so a bit of welding bit of cleaning up here we go looking good though you join us in the in the cabin looking at the rear of the wheel tub and we've been busy I've put a little bit of skim filler on a bit of metal filler in, and flattened it back and now we've just got some primer running down that seam we've been injected out with primer there a nice zinc rich primer and then we're just going to clean up where those spot welds nicely hit the uh, sill and then we'll put some more primer on those and then what we're going to do we're going to run the seam sealer down now the reason we're running the seam sealer down is because once we close this bracket up here it's a little bit tricky to get to and also when the cross member goes on we've got a cross member that goes along here fitting to that little humpback bridge over there and across so because that would get in the way of the seam seal we'd like to put that in now I'm also gonna put this back into the the Ford primer and finish this area off we've got that spar to fit so we fold this down it lands on there we rub away the paint get some bare metal there get the welder on the go and weld that up it then goes up to those holes you see there which will then weld too and that will give us that structure back in place but even more strength back into the car and that'll finish for this evening's run on this outside painted and inside painted and seam sealed we've got our nice floor bung just been popped into position there and indeed a chassis one here with some tar pads to go down as well and then that would complete this area once the uh, the sound deadening tar pads are down and everything's in 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 brown paint down brown why do we keep getting all these couplets i do not know so a little bit more flatting to do and a bit of etch primer on this surface we get the phosclean b out now and just clean that back to bare metal so it's phosclean b time first uh seam sealer down and then weld into that uh, bracket there seam seal around the bung seam seal around that bung tar pads down then over paint it uh, brown and that's tonight's session done and this quarter area here this little shape this square should look quite good as I say we went and filled in all the plug welds there's a couple little imperfections left but I didn't go over them for the second fill simply because the tar pads are going over it's just a waste of time going to town trying to get this like a mirror finish when the tar pad fits in it all I wanted to do was make sure the plug welds didn't poke through the tar pad so it will look uniform and straight 
and uh, it's pretty nice anyway. I've gone, you know, I've been rubbing and sanding in there with the uh, the metal filler, and the I didn't use metal filler on this one. We've used a combination of dolphin glaze, a quick sand, a Upol quick sand filler, and the metal filler in some areas. Okay, we've also put a plate in and repaired that where there was some damaged metal, so that's been flush fitted. A little bit of a plate went in here and that repaired that. So we've done all the repairs, we've done all the welding. We little hide those plug welds there on there. That's done. We're almost coming to an end of this quarter. We won't be able to fit the cross member because um, it's not got uh, the chassis fixed on this side yet and it actually crosses the chassis path so we can't actually it'd be nice if we got the cross member in but uh, I'll prep the rest of the area anyway here we go then for a little bit of uh, seam sealing a bit of fos clean B on there just wash that back getting ready and then some some etch prime so a bit more preparation work a bit of welding to do then the paint goes on and that area is getting closed up it'll look nice on that wheel housing when the seam sealer goes in let's get on and get busy boss clean then get that nice and clean and washed back let's get some etch prime on there now it's nice reaching up into this corner nicely into those gaps I should have gloves on for this so you've got me there you can get me on that one so you win I've just forgot let's get them on Okay, we're nearly done with that. I'll carry on. You don't need to see any more of that nonsense. Let's just keep washing. Okay, we're going in for a bit of seam sealer. Note the, uh, the Project Bramble t-shirt is on. Look at that bad boy. Available in the shop. Available in the shop, Project Bramble t-shirt. Let's seal! Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, the actual sealer is on. I've got to be really careful now not to stand in the floor bungs when I do the seam sealer on those inevitably that's what will happen ok there really is nothing to it it's quite a thick bead that goes up on the wheel to one that's it just no need to fuss any more than that it almost seems un too good to be true that that's all you do with it true do that's all you do but that is it I say that every time don't I but that is it
Okay, nicely spot welded in there, and then the, the proper factory blob welds that they have, that's that's normal. So we're done with welding, that's a good finish for that, and the seam sealer looks nice. Look, are you happy? Oh yeah, very happy with that. Um, up here I've just tacked it in for now because I couldn't really get uh, much power on there without blowing through this very thin metal. I've got it to grab, I'm just going to sand back and skim them out. I'm not going to try and keep on migging around because you end up chasing it, it's a little bit thin up there. Could do if I'm really really careful. We'll see how we go but we just wanted to lock it in in this area. I'm going to do that later when I do this one so I'm not too worried about cleaning that one up yet. Okay, so we're good to go there. Stepping back the best that I can for you. I'm inside clambering around and trying not to stand in the uh, the wet seam seal. I haven't managed to do it yet. So there you go. Looking nice there. And now our next job, we'll get some clean um, prime on that. We'll clean that area up where we just welded. Give it a bit of etch primer. Then we'll, we'll blow this in in the, the Ford Brown to finish the day nicely tar pads next here we go well we're out of time for today otherwise I would have uh, carried on but what I want to do is let the seam sealer uh, cure itself because when the tar pads go down you don't want to squish the seam sealer you want the tar pad to land on like hard seam seal so it sort of semi imprints in and also you want a slight imprint of that biscuit there's the biscuit I'm talking about it's a floor bung we call them little biscuits or trivial pursuit pieces or orange segments whatever you want to call them and they imprint nicely into the floor pan when you put the sound deadening tar pads down but it's better if the seam sealer was cured and then also obviously because for over painting you want it cured you can paint it when it's just gone off and it eventually will cure under paint but best to let it evaporate off there's that bracket in spot welds come out nicely on that one just about managed to get our super machine in a little bit of a tight squeeze there um, wheel tub housing in nicely grab hold of the bead pillar here and shake and you just feel the strength it's there shaking the entire car nothing moving just completely locked and all the strength coming back multiple points where it all locks together everything taut everything strong very nice so we've almost recovered ourselves back to where we were and uh, the shell now starts looking towards this corner for the last push can we do it yes we can last of the rust last of the push into this corner so just a, a small section of the car left in terms of rust removal and once that's gone and we've done a duplicate of what I've done this side it's a long road ahead we're only halfway up the mountain but we can do it We've got all them spot welds to drill out on this side. We've got all the spot welds to drill out yet again for the donor piece. We've got to repair the donor piece. We've got to do another graft job. We've got to go through all that. We've got to get that back leg off and repaired. Remove the wing. That's quite easy to do. Look at the quarter uh, tub. We're going to repair this tub because it's not beyond saving. It needs localised repairs. It's not worth breaking it away. We think it'll save. So this tub to be saved just it's the hardest part will be the where it meets the sill it's a very complex fold what I'm going to try and do is make a pattern and get a really nice pattern piece of metal shaped professionally for that or I might find a scrap wheel tub that I could salvage it from I don't want to take that tub out it seems such a shame because it's only got damage down by where it meets the sill even its rear end last tail section of the tub is, is salvageable it's still there it's incredible really how that tub has survived we don't think they fitted a new one in the accident because there's no ev evidence of the spot welds around the tub fixing points being disturbed that tub just somehow survived it's incredible really considering the state of the car them tubs normally go well before the car rots anywhere else so that's an odd one we'll never work it out but we don't need to worry about that all we need to do is, is work out how we're going to repair it properly get a really neat repair on that wheel tub we will do it I believe the outer arch lip of it is okay if it's not I can take the outer shell from the tub you can actually split them into two the worst case scenario is we split and fit an outer face that could be a good compromise um, indeed main most of the outer face is that complex part so perhaps we could do that we'll have a look an investigation we're drawing to a close here for this evening's film work 
I'm hoping that uh, my panels arrive soon. I do not want to be stalled by a lack of panels. I think that I've made good progress. I think that you'll agree. I'll leave you now. Let me go in. As usual, it's the end of a, a day. Eight o'clock I like to finish in the evening. If I've been on it in the afternoon. If I've not been on it and I've been at work and I've started at five, I'll go through till ten o'clock. Tonight's eight o'clock. I'm going to get some dinner, upload these for Patreons. And... Um, We'll see you very shortly. Not an exact copy of our Ford Leyden realm, it's just because the size of the squares, it has cut the nearest corners out, so you meant to leave those seatbelt mounted anchor points free, and then basically cover as big a floor area as you can. They're not so much for soundproofing, they're for sound deadening, and the stop drumming of the panels it just gives everything a more solid feel. Sound deadening is a separate uh, mission with Dynamite cut exactly to the floor pan sizes. So these just stop panel drumming and it's good to get them in because when I'm working on the car, because it's a bare shell without these pads, very echoey and as soon as I put them down it's starting to get quieter and quieter which means when I'm working on the back end it's less noise as well and with it coming up to summer and me being not too far from neighbours, I don't want to make too much noise. I'm glad that most of the hammering's out of the way before people are in the gardens. If people are in the gardens, I, I've got to be quiet. I've got to pick my moments sometimes. It makes it a little bit difficult, but that's just courtesy. You don't want to just take the mic or... So you've got to just think all the time. These will help, because if I'm hammering some, it's that little bit less noise than you got. So they're down, and we're going to paint them. And then once we've painted those, we're going to look at this side and just decide, side, decide, oh my god, another couplet, uh, that it's all signed off, and then I'll start looking at that side, because what we're doing, we're pushing a wave this way, obviously we need that cross member, we can't get that in yet, I've maxed, masked off where it's going to fit, we can't get it in until we free up this area where the chassis legs go, and so really, when this paint is on, I would say that the next job for me is to go over here, come with me, come along, come on over this side and start pulling this chassis leg to bits. Oh, please help me. No, oh no. I mean, it's hold. But we've got to do our usual one, two. Buckle my shoe and grab this, this other fork into it. Look, oh, oh no. What a mission. What a thankless task. Do you know what? I was wondering, what do you reckon about this for an idea? Slice this out now, preempt it, and fit the other piece with the floor still in, and say go from there. It might give us a bit more of a better jig, you know, as opposed to trying to really uh, make that measuring device that I did. I could preempt the situation, slice that out, and drop the other piece in, resting it on the on the floor pan so I don't have to drill this out just yet <clears throat> and then get some tacks on it then take this off I don't know it was just an idea help me out okay moving on paint on first
painted and ready to go. And now we've reached that point, ladies and gentlemen out there in YouTube and Patreon land. Are you cosy? Are you enjoying the show? You're right with me. What do you know? Okay, so look down here, we see loads of spot welds. Look down here, and we've got the remains of the chassis leg, and it's got to come off. It's even worse, <coughs> excuse me, than that side. So, it has to come off, and there's only one way to get it off, and that means that our usual one, two, buckle my shoe and drill off all these welds. Probably around 50 to drill, not as many because I've already got most of it off down here when we did the floor so that's quite good in that respect however some are tricky to get to down the side of that tub where the, the chuck of the drill scaves on the side of the wheel tub but they've got to be drilled we need to get that cross member off that's not too bad to do so we've got pilot to holes to drill we've got spot welds to remove we we'll first get our scotch pad and we'll use that just to scuff up and clean up the areas and we'll get the magic marker out magic marker a felt tip pen and we'll mark all them up okay i'm going to do that first and then start drilling here we go for chassis leg near side removal here we go okay most of them spot welds are drilled i saved you the agony <clears throat> to get to some of the ones right next to the wheel well where the chuck would hit it i just used some extending drill bits those bits, the magnetic bits, you can just join a load together in a, in a sort of stack and make a long, I made like a long drill drill rod which enabled me to get right in so I think I've got all those drilled it's now time to go underneath, get the gloves on chisel out, and start pry barring and messing around see if we can hear any signs of life of that uh, chassis detaching, here we go don't ever me guys, this one's proving a monster. One more to go at the top of it. It's all rotted at the top when I've been prizing on it. It's all just disintegrating and just taught, it's basically snapped in half. When I've come to get it, I've got one stubborn bit at the back. Whoa! It's gone. I've had to cut a couple of shreds there just to get access to it so I could see. There was one stuck in the middle, <clears throat> a massive cluster. There, we lost it. But uh, we'll repair that piece. That weld was hidden. That was a toughie, I must have, it was a bit harder than the other side. Um, so we got the main piece out. As I say, when you're not using the panel, you can speed the job up and cut into it and get your chisel in at the side if you're breaking the, the piece apart. You can see the weld gone. So it didn't matter if we made a couple of incisions to speed the job up. Um, I had it starting to go down that side nicely. It was going down here nicely, then it hit a stubborn spot just there and then hit a cluster here. I got all four, there was one, would you believe, and it took a big piece of metal with it when I slide. See, just got it at the end. See how that spot weld almost got it, but it just caught it on two together. Stuff like that can, can catch you out. So it's gone there only because it's completely rotted itself away from the rest of it and it's ripped out. So we'll take the leg off as well. Right, a couple more little slices and that's away. So you didn't ever meet all the spot weld drilling inside paid off on the hole. It's just you get caught with the odd one now and again. A little break for me as I lie down on the floor with the camera, just having a little rest. Yeah, quite a little mini workout that was. It'd be good to get that off and get the metal cleaned up under there, just certainly around the area where we're refitting. This bit's getting shot blasted when the shell gets uh, taken to the blasters, so it'll be flipped upside down, so that'll cover all that. And everything that we've done comes off and gets redone. But for now, we want to just carry on breaking this down and get that leg off at the back as well, because we've proved there's no need for them. And um, we can then take the quarter off as well. We may as well just strip the rest of the rusty metal today, because that'll give us a clear focus. So we're going to switch now to just chomping the rest of the car away. So quite a few cutting discs will be brought out and I'll slice away what's left of the car and put it on the scrap pile. It's more room to move around in here as well. Less metal hanging about and uh, get that metal recycled and get rid of it. Uh, don't think there's any reference points we need from it. So we're okay. All right. So I'll just do a couple more slices for you and we'll get that metal, the rest of that chassis leg taken off. Here we go for near side chassis removal
good. Oh, that was tough. Woo! Oh. Well, on the floor's the chassis leg, off in one piece. Looks on the whole okay. A couple of pins in it. I think we'll survive and remake that and repair it. Over here, then, you saw me struggling on the floor there, bashing that out. Really, what we should do is take the rest of this wing off and get it out of the way. Just gives us more room to move. No point dodging around that. It's going to be off at one point, so it may as well be now. So we, we want to keep the wheel tub, so we're going to cut just back of it where any contact face is, especially with the structure of that wheel tub where it comes further down, that little shape, round the arch, cross around the top of the roof. We'll make some slits and peel this back off. It should go quite easily. Need to cut right round the wheel tub until we know exactly how they've attached that quarter to the wheel tub because this was a repair piece we don't know if they've migged it it's not going to have standard spot welds around this point so we're best just slicing round the arch being careful not to let the slitting disc cut into the wheel tub itself so quite a few cuts you're a little tight on space for me to get the camera in. you can hear the metal catching on my clothes and that's what we're up against a little bit tight with space we could spin the car around but I don't want to I'll put the camera around this area here, hope that's alright for you, it's the best we're going to get for you. And then these go on to the cutting disc, protective gear on, we'll cut round the arch, we'll cut, uh, we're only disconnected here because of the B pillar was replaced so we cut along the top. A couple more cuts along the window, it should peel backwards. So bear with me and fast forward then, camera on there, best I can get you. Let's cut this up, last of the rust then to be removed. Quite a, quite a landmark. Here we go. Are you <laughs> Hey Jim. Are you ready? Are you ready, Jim? Gary? Lee? John? Martin? Are you ready? Mark Giles, are you ready? Giles Monster? Are you ready? Last of the rust. We're cracking up. Fumes have got to be here. The Perrier is gone straight to my head. Are you ready? Better make your move. Better make your move. That's caught me that's a million times. Better make your move. Better make your move. Little new is ready. Gotta make your move. Woo! Are you ready?
Okay. Cut. Let's go down and have a look at that wheel tub now. That's that wing's gone. You were up there. Did you enjoy that little show? Straight on and you stay alive. Oh yeah, we bring you straight in. You don't stop. So across the window, down, across the arch, and they have been migging around. This is migged on. Quite solidly migged on, so we're gonna have to find how they've done it. And slowly unpick where they've migged it. Probably just break it down with a grinder. I'll spin the light round so you can see. There you, there you go. There's some holes there you see there for the chrome wheel arch trim, they're not the MIG well. So it's trying to spot where they've MIGged it really. It looks like I can see it. The clue is they've burned into the edge of the uh, wheel housing lid, like this one. That's your clue. Mysterious bit of lip missing means someone's been MIGging the edge. They've just MIGged it on at the edge. That's how they fitted that. Here is the, how the real leg housing of it. It's the ear of it, and that's normally all rotted, so that's good. Some localised there, we can peel this off. But we think about that another time. I just wanted to get the scrap metal out of the way. The best thing to do, now you've just cut that back, is leave that. And don't even think about it for now. Just put it out right out of your mind and concentrate on where we got up to, which was here. So there you go, a good clear view then. And not in bad condition under that. I'll scrub up and clean with a phosphate B not even need a wire wheel probably on that, just hand scrub this and it came off quite nice, especially down the edge where the tub is, if you see, is a very clean separation there no distortion, so that's one of the hardest lines to get and it's, it was the easiest bit that came off hardest bit was where it's tore some metal just there, see that bigger hole, it's ripped to piece but that can be fixed, it's on a backing plate so it won't be too bad but I'm afraid I'm never perfect that was the only casualty, the one that I missed. There's always a few that you miss. So don't even think about the wheel tub except for us to think to ourselves that it could be salvaged. So there's not a, a huge rush to find a wheel tub. Lower an outer half would be good. An outer housing would be nice. Okay, so we shall now clean up all this mess that we've made doing that breakdown. And we'll leave it for today to give ourselves some physical and mental rest and we'll uh, we'll finish at five o'clock with a clean workshop and a, a plan ahead of us okay so that was a good little bit of removal take all that now to the scrap metal pile work out what we need and what we don't vac up all the mess and then get ready for a fresh start tomorrow morning how, how about that for a plan we'll do that and if you're coming to the end of this episode 23 then Again, doing good on YouTube. Thanks for the support on Patreon, all to the new Patreons that have joined. A little club going there on Patreon now. Thank you for that. And I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, paint clean up on that side with a tub. Went nice, I think you'll agree. And that leaves us. We've chased the rust into this corner. Don't forget that anything now that we fit at the end here. It's got no rust. It's all going to be new panels. So we're into new panel territory now. All those most of the panels we've got, so it's just a case of question of reassembling a boot floor, chassis legs. So we're nearly done in terms of the rot. That was quite good. So we end on that note, I think, and that's over and out for Pete C at Cortina City. Hope you enjoy the series so far. I'll catch you in the next episode. Twenty-four. Over and out, Pete C. See you soon. I'll try and get you another good intro. We'll see you soon. All Scorpios feature the A4LD automatic gearbox. Now, if you haven't come across this before, it really is truly remarkable. The fourth gear is like an overdrive. You can lock it out, leaving yourself with a conventional three-speed automatic gearbox, but slip into that overdrive gear and you really do have relaxed, high speed and very economical cruising. In fact, the economy figures derived from this gearbox are really almost unbelievable. They are producing figures within 1% of those produced by a conventional 5-speed manual box. That was a game and a half, wasn't it, Fred? Yeah, but we should have had it sewn up by half-time. What we need is a bit more skill up front. Hey, how are you getting home? 
bus? No, I've got the new car with me. New, eh? <laughs> you must be doing all right. Well, it's in fantastic nick, though. Only 10,000 on the clock. Goes like a bomb. Yeah? I'll tell you what, I'll give you a lift home. Thanks. We can hear the football results on the radio. Only just around the corner. You can't miss it, it's white. That's funny. I could have sworn I left it here. Remember, lock your car. Check the doors, the windows, the boot. And please, take the keys with you. Watch out, there's a thief about.